Hi. Hi, Jane. Um, this is Josh on the phone. Oh, Seven eight one nine one three six seven three nine. Okay, I thought it was Jane. I just heard a, a, a 
That's how he usually signs on. Yeah. Hi, Josh, you want me? You don't probably have the agenda in front of you, so I'll, I'll take hold if you want. Yeah, that sounds good. Thanks, Mark. I'm not far away. I'm uh, in Revere. Taking a ride while I do this, like listen to this in a hot Zoom meeting about my liquor license. Okay, I don't see um, Tony on yet, but um, we can start without him. It is 6.30. Uh, Gene, yeah. you want? Yeah. yeah, I'm on. Uh, I see Josh is on. He's on the, he's on the uh, yep. road. He's on the road, yep. so. Um, yeah, I'm here, um, and um, so we're, we're hoping to step through this quickly, as you guys know, so that we can get on the northern strand call about the changes to the Linway. So I'd say let's get going. Okay. Um, so I'll open the uh, joint meeting of the Board of Selectmen, Board of Health, uh, and the Board of Health acting as the local licensing authority. All three members of the board are present. Uh, first on our agenda is the virus update. I see Deb, um, you're on. It's all, it's, uh, why don't you take it over there? Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Can I, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. Okay. So here's our um, latest COVID statistics mm -hmm. for the month of November. Currently, we have uh, seven cases. Um, our last two week testing data from ten thirty one to eleven thirteen, we had four hundred residents tested, and nine uh, were positive. Compared to all of the other communities right now, um, we are doing extremely well. Um, I, we do have um, new information now in our weekly reports for the five to 11 year olds that are now eligible for vaccines. And I just checked tonight, it just came out. So uh, in the hunt, we have 166 uh, residents, children who are in that age group. And as of today, we have 13 of them uh, with their first vaccine. Um, on the same note, I want to mention that the school, the Johnson School in collaboration with um, Cataldo Ambulance is sponsoring um, a Pfizer vaccine clinic for all of Nahant residents age five to 11. And the first uh, clinic is gonna be held November 30th from three to 8 p.m. at the town hall. Uh, and then three weeks later, the second dose will be uh, December 21st 
uh, from three to eight. Um, the uh, Cataldo ambulance uh, personnel will be running that clinic and um, they have assured us that uh, they have uh, the competent people in place to make this a very successful event. Um, so I know the school has sent out the link to all of the uh, parents of the children so that they can um, log on and make an appointment for that. Um, another note on this Friday um, from 12 to 3 p.m. Uh, at Lynn City Hall, we are having a booster clinic for the Lynn and Nahant first responders. So all of our um, police and fire have, um, have received that information today and hopefully um, we'll see them all on Friday. Um, on, on just one more note, our, um, looking at the vaccine data for our young population, um, our 12 to 15 year old group, we have 91% of them vaccinated right now. And the rest of our age groups, we're well into the 90s. So we've done a, uh, the Nahat residents have done an amazing job getting their vaccines, um, which is still what we're trying to promote right now, um, especially now that the holidays are coming up and we know people will be um, you know, gathering for the, the Thanksgiving and Christmas and Hanukkah holidays. So everybody should be vaccinated. And if you're eligible, you should certainly try to get a booster. I think um, that's, that's all the, uh, the COVID data that I have, Mark. Uh, thanks, Deb. Uh, a lot of good news there. And thanks again for your team. Um, teamwork didn't, getting us through this. I see Tony's on now. Tony, you want to add anything on this? Yeah, I just would, you know, for those listening in, um, parents especially, you know, Cataldo uh, is extremely reputable in this area, especially dealing with um, the youth. Uh, all of their clinicians are either RNs, LPNs, EMTs, or paramedics, as well as pediatricians. Um, we, you know, really followed up with them specifically on that because we want to make sure that, you know, our parents and children feel comfortable. Um, you know, they're not required to get vaccinated. Um, uh, but, you know, we're providing this opportunity for those that want to take advantage of it. Um, we, uh, you know, if, a ch if, if your child is um, uncomfortable at the clinic, you know, they will not be uh, forced in any way uh, to proceed. Um, certainly we will, you know, the Cataldo will work with the parents and, you know, you know, whichever way they want to go, if they want to proceed or, or, you know, help the, help the child take the vaccine or, or, you know, not do it. It's completely up to you. Um, and we've, you know, Deb and I talked a little bit about, um, you know, how tough of a decision it is for parents. Um, and, you know, a lot of questions that come our way. And, you know, we've really been pushing people to, you know, talk to their, uh, to their primary care uh, physicians with that and get the information from them about, you know, the vaccine and um, whether to get it or not for, the, for your kids. Uh, but, you know, we've just wanted to make sure that people knew, you know, we did our homework with Cataldo to make sure that this is a comfortable experience. Um, and lastly, I think, you know, one of the things we are, you know, we, we, if, uh, if we, Deb, remind me of the, of the, of the threshold, but if we reach a certain amount, a number, a certain number of students. 80%, 80%. Okay. So, so that includes okay. students and staff. Students and staff. So if 80% of our students and staff are vaccinated, the school can petition to the state to lift the mask requirement. Um, but, you know, again, it's, it's really a, it's a personal decision. So um, uh, we, we, we're very confident in Cataldo's ability. And I wanna thank, you know, Deb and Cheryl and Tony P, uh, Tony Parentazzi, the superintendent for, you know, all the groundwork they've done on this. So that's all. Sounds great. All good news. Um, 
hopefully we'll hit that 80 percent soon and we'll be able to uh lift that mask mandate i know picking my uh grandchild up from preschool that gets pretty raggedy that mask at the end of the day so i look forward to um math not having them wear one that'll be great okay i have some announcements here uh, compost area open on Wednesdays and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, residents stick are required biodegradable bags only. Last day of curbside leaf pickup will be Monday, November 29th. Leaves and biodegradable bags only. Plastic bags will not be accept accepted. No open barrels, no roots, root balls, or branches bigger than four inches in diameter. Di diameter. Bags must be out of uh, at the curb by 7 a.m. The town hall will be closed on Thursday, November 25th and Friday, November 26th in observance of Thanksgiving. Trash and recycling delay the week of Thanksgiving. Trash and recycle will be on Friday and Saturday. So it's moved up a day for each area. So, um, so Thursdays will be picked up on uh, Fridays, and Fridays will be picked up on Saturdays. Some upcoming events: Saturday, November twenty-sixth, Sunday, November uh, December nineteenth, Christmas tree sales at the Lowlands parking lot. Thursdays and Fridays from six p.m. to nine p.m., and Saturdays and Sundays from nine a.m. to nine p.m. Saturday, November twenty-seventh, annual holiday craft fair at the town hall. From 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., face masks are required regardless of vaccination status. Saturday, December 4th, annual tree lighting at the Manhattan Hall front lawn at 6 p.m. Saturday, December 11th, fundraiser for the annual Christmas parade at the Tides Restaurant at 6 p.m. Saturday, December 18th, um, annual um let's see oh the annual tommy hutton christmas parade starting at 6 p.m from the village church on cliff street okay um i guess we have a public hearing we have to um we have to enter uh and this is regarding a uh a liquor license from the high country is, club i see hey, that hey mark you, yeah um, be before we move on to that new business, um, could I just make a couple of opening comments? Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, well, first of all, I just wanted to let people know that we're going to try to step through this meeting as quickly as possible because at seven o'clock there is a, a public hearing on the uh, Northern Strand uh, bikeway extension, and uh, all three of the board of selectmen and Tony are going to be on that call. So we want to um, move through this agenda as quickly as possible. Um, and to that end, we, um, we um, are deferring the continued review of the town administrator goals and um, the town meeting um, article re status reviews uh, until the first meeting in December. Uh, we'll have to plan on a long meeting that week because uh, those are important things to go through, uh, particularly these infrastructure uh, progress because uh, critical to not long-term future um and then finally um um i emailed about um um opening access to lodge park overnight friday night for the uh, lunar eclipse there's a, a long lunar eclipse which peaks at 4 a.m um you probably saw chief furlong's email um saying he would let um his his uh know and and uh the staff at northeastern so um I don't know if we need a vote on that, but um, I just wanted to mention that that um, will be with the support of um, the board, I guess, will be um, Lodge Park will be open um, Friday night into Saturday morning for anybody that wants to watch that eclipse. Can I, can I make a quick comment on that as far as the, uh, the closing time of the park? Who's responsible for that? Because I've had a number of people I wouldn't say a number, but I've had several people ask me why they can't go up after dark. And they're told by the, the security guard that it closes at dusk and that nobody can go up there afterwards. Is that not our right of way and our decision 
it, as to who it is and it's yeah, so all the all the public park all the public parks in town technically close at dusk, uh, okay. but it's the town's decision when, you know, when that closing time can be. That's, I believe, that's just something the selectmen can vote on setting the the times of the various parks open and closing time. I think it's dawn currently dawn to dusk. Yeah, and and if if I could just jump in, I mean that park specifically. Uh, you know, at night, it's it's dangerous as it is during the day. Uh, so certainly with low light, you know, it's been the town policy to close that down at dusk. Okay, good. It's a change game plan. I can't in it. Okay, you all set, Mr. Chairman? Uh, yeah. Okay, so um, we're going to have a hearing on the... Uh, like a license of the High Country Club. Gene, if I could have a motion to open um, the public hearing. Yeah, we can do that. I just had it in front of me. To, to open the hearing. Yeah, I can do it. You can second it. I move yeah, that the board of open public hearing. Can I give a second? Seconded. Seconded. All in favor? Josh Andrew, Gene, Gene Cantillay. Uh, Colin and I. Okay. Um, now I can have a motion. Uh, do you have the motion for the uh, uh, for the liquor license, Gene? Do you want to read that? I move that the Board of Selectmen vote to approve the application for a change in name and ownership to the annual club license as applied for by the Nahant Country Club, Inc. Peter Dawson, located at 280 Nahant Road, Nahant to the new country club, Inc., Yasmin Driscoll. All statutory requirements relating to publication and notice were duly complied with, including publication in the daily evening item, a local newspaper on November 1st, 2021. Notice to all persons deemed by the Alcoholic Beverages Commission to be affected by the petition was given and we authorized the town administrator to sign the certification document on our behalf. I'll second that um, discussion. I know that Yasmin is on the phone and Tony, do you want to um, talk us through this quickly? Sure, and, and, and we should allow anybody, uh, the public that's right. on here that would want to comment um, to have that opportunity. Uh, this application came to us. Uh, Yasmin is here. She can explain. But essentially, this is changing the the ownership of the license itself, which is part of transferring the business into her name. Um, and it's uh, it's not changing the 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 type of liquor license that has always been uh, in place at the country club. It's just simply a um, a paperwork issue related to who owns or is in possession of the license. Okay, great. Um, um, as, as Tony said, this is a public hearing. So I'm gonna ask if there's anybody uh, who wants to speak against this um, application, um, speak up. And I see that a hand on. Um, if there's anybody who wants to speak in favor, of this application, feel free to speak up. Yeah, I meaning you're, you're muted. So if you want to have anything to say, you should unmute yourself. Hi. Hi, we Hi. can hear you. Okay, Hello. sorry about that. I didn't know if I was interrupting or perhaps not being heard, but the mute is certainly it. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, I guess it's it's been, um, I think as for many of us, it's been quite a journey the last few years. Um, so this will just help kind of tie up some, some things with my father's passing. And, so I, um, I've had that, Yasmin, I had that right, correct? That it's not a change in any of the type of the liquor license, it's just simply the ownership of it? Yeah, everything else is the same. Okay. And from a public health perspective, I would just like to say, Yasmin, um, she has been so helpful 
with the town um, with our COVID response. I, th I don't think a lot of people know that. Um, first, by letting us use the Nahant Country Club for our first outdoor uh, flu clinic that we had to have when COVID first appeared a year and a half ago. And um, after that, when she had to manage many positive uh, COVID cases and work with me very closely, she uh, did an excellent job. And she was one of the best people in town that I've worked with. No, oh, Deb. No, it's true, Yasmin. <laughs> and, um, you know, oh. I, and I wish you, I wish you, I know it's been a really tough with, with the COVID and the events and so forth, but I wish you a lot of good luck going forward. I thank you. I appreciate, certainly does take a village and I'm lucky to have the one I have. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, thanks for the kind words, Deb. And uh, I, I, I agree. I think Yasmin has been doing a great job over there. It's been tough and uh, I hope things get better for you. So if there's no Thank further you. discussion, okay, if there's no further discussion, um, we'll give a vote. Gene Canty, I. Mark Cullen and I. I guess Josh, uh, Josh might be transitioning from his house, from his car to his house, but it passes. Um, He's muted. There we go. I'm unmuted now, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes. Josh and for my. Okay. Great. Um, okay. Thanks. Um, Thank you everyone. so much. Welcome, Jasmine. Um, I move that the board of selectmen close the uh, public hearing. Seconded. I move. Oops, sorry. Yep. That's okay. Did we make a motion? Yeah, the motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Gene can't be aye. Josh Andrew Mai. Mark Keller and I. Go ahead, Josh. You want to take over our new business? Um so new business approve event request for the Lion Club um, annual turkey shoot, Saturday, November 20th. 2021 from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. behind the DPW. Motion. Mm -hmm. Motion made. Seconded. I, I move that the uh, Board of Selectmen vote to approve the event request for the Lions Club annual turkey shoot on November 20th, 2021 from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. behind the DPW on Flash Road. No, seconded. Um, any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, uh, roll call vote. Gene Canty, aye. Mark Cullen, and I. Josh Andrew, my. Um, next one is the um, one day liquor license. I move that the Board of Selectmen vote to approve a one day all alcohol liquor license to the American Legion Post 215 on November 27, 2021, from 12 to 4 o'clock for the memorial service for Master Chief Morris Perlin at the American Legion Post 215 96 and a half Road and authorize the town administrator to sign the special license document. Second. Any discussion? Uh, Mr. Poulin died um, a while back um, during the COVID pandemic, and uh, it's nice to see that he'll be honored at this um, service this um, week from Saturday. Well, any other discussion? Hearing and seeing none, roll call vote. Gene Canty, aye. Mark Cullen, aye. Josh Andrew, aye. Um, we have an event request for the Nahant Historical Society. Uh, okay, I move that the Board of Selectmen vote to approve the event request from the Nahant Historical Society to hold a lecture by Nahant artist and sculptor Reno Ray Pisano on Sunday, December 5th, 2021, from 12 to 4 p.m. at the Town Hall. Seconded. Um, discussion. Um, so for background here, Ray Pisano will be giving a lecture on the creation of a 14 foot tall bronze sculpture of Christ, which includes a video of the process and narrated by Mr. Pisano. The 
organizer of this event has been informed that masks are mandatory while at the event, regardless of vaccination status. Um, this will be pretty interesting lecture. I think uh, Mr. Pisano is quite an accomplished um, sculptor, uh, including creating the uh, sculpture that's uh, on the front lawn of the library, that granite um, sculpture. So um, be a good good um, event to go to. Yeah, I know we just finished the uh, Frederick, Frederick, Frederick Douglass uh, bronze statue for Lynn too. So yeah. I've, known, I've known Ray for, um, for many, many years as I grew up with his son. Um, I was at his house in his studio many, many times. Um, he's quite, uh, quite the skilled craftsman and artist. And I think he's close to 100 years old too now. Yeah. So it'd be, be a good event to go to. Definitely. Um, any other discussion? Hearing and seeing none, roll call vote. Gene Canty, aye. Mark Cullen, aye. Josh Andrew, aye. We have an event request for an ocean plunge. I move that the Board of Selectmen vote to approve the event request for the annual freezing for a reason ocean plunge on New Year's Day, January 1st, 2022, starting at 11 o'clock at Short Beach, 11 a.m. Seconded. Um, just some information. The police will have an extra officer on duty that day for any issues, and fire EMTs do not require a detail. Um, this open this ocean plunge is in the is an annual event hosted by Lancelot Janitorial in Lynn. Fire and police have also been notified. Um, I think everybody's familiar with this polar plunge on New Year's Day at Short Beach. Um, any other discussion? Well, maybe we can have a, a portable defibrillator now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, not for the faint of heart. But. Yeah. Any? Gene Canty, I. Mark Cullen, I. Josh Antrim, I. Um, next on the agenda is ongoing business. Do we have anything we were going to report on there? Um, I, I think if it's not, there's nothing on the agenda. Um, I would just say since we're moving into the uh, we'll be going on to the public hearing for the bike, um, the Northern Strand expansion project. Yeah. Uh, that, you know, we have engaged with the D with DCR, DOT, Stantec, the consultants that are hired for the design of the project, um, the city of Lynn. Uh, we've been to a site visit. Mark went to a site visit um, earlier this week on Monday. Uh, I've had a few um conversations with folks that are involved in this project we've already expressed our concern uh for the traffic and environmental impacts of this project but you know we are extremely supportive of the project overall um you know the ability to open up a you know lane of travel um to and from our area eventually this you'll you, you'll be able to ride your bike all the way to assembly square in somerville uh, the casino in Everett, um, you know, and, and it's a, it's, it's a great opportunity for anybody that, that likes to do that type of thing. Um, but obviously we Tony, understand. Tony, the problem will be riding back after you visit the casino. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, hey, so Tony, can you give a quick description of how it's going to impact the hands? Well, so there's two things to keep in mind. This project, it has to do with Market Street to the Rotary uh, and, and for the northbound side. So if you're traveling towards the Rotary, um, what it wants to do, what the design currently includes is shrinking that roadway from three lanes to two lanes and having a dedicated bike lane on the right-hand side, um, which means dedicated, not shared. So that means there would be curbing in between you know, the two lanes of vehicle traffic and the bike path. Um, what we've expressed um, is that if it are, if it is to uh, be on that side of the roadway that the third 
lane all the way to the right uh, is maintained, you know, all the way up to about the porthole property where green space is available to take that bike lane off road and onto the grass, which they are going, the design calls for anyways, because they're not gonna put the bike lane into the rotary. Um, but instead of just, uh, instead of having it pop off of the, of the linway and onto the grass right at the entrance of the rotary, bring it back a little bit more so that, um, especially vehicles trying to get to Naha, they can pull into that right lane and still have their dedicated travel lane to the causeway. Um, there's also, uh, what I'll mention tonight is, you know, have, have they considered uh, looking at putting the bike lane on the other side of, of the linway? So essentially, the, if you are coming from the rotary heading towards Market Street, um, there's a lot less congestion on that side of the road, uh, less traffic impacts. And I bring up the environmental concern because as you have traffic backed up and multiple cars idling, that is a, that's a lot of carbon emissions um, involved in that. So putting it on the other side may eliminate some of those issues and the negative traffic impacts that could uh, be felt by Naha residents, Swampscott residents, basically anybody traveling to the rotary. Um, but there's the long, the second part, which is not part of this project and not really under Stantec scope of services, which is what the hearing for tonight is. The secondary project is that there is a long-term master plan from DCR to turn the entire linway to two lanes and make it more of a parkway. That is not up for discussion tonight, but it does link into this project because you know, as I'm sitting, as I'm making the recommendation to maybe move this bike lane to the other side so that we don't have to eliminate the three lanes, they may be looking to do that in the future anyways. Uh, so um, there's a method, there's a, there's a science behind that to slowing down the traffic. I mean, I will say that, you know, that rotary sign in the rotary uh, gets taken out almost every month because people are flying into that rotary. Uh, so there is a speed issue on the Cow Parkway from Market Street to the rotary. Um, that makes it pretty dangerous. But, um, you know, at night during the commute home, that traffic, you're going from three lanes, essentially to two lanes in the rotary to one lane once you get past the Nahant exit. So there's a bottleneck issue there and how this is going to affect commuters to Nahant is obviously a concern for our residents. Um, you know, but all that being said, we are, you know, we're supportive of the project. It's just the devil's in the details and how can we accomplish the same goal with maybe less negative impacts for our residents? What, what's, what's the projected timeline on this? The, they're at 25% design. And I don't know, I don't know, you know, what the timeline is from here on out, but they'll, they'll get into that in the meeting. Okay. So just to summarize, you know, we're gonna, we're, we're in support of the program, but we wanna make sure it gets done in a manner that uh, minimizes the traffic impacts to uh, Nahant residents and per, by, by preserving that uh, dedicated Nahant exit lane. So that's what we'll- Tony, did you say there was gonna be, a, did you say there was gonna be a curbing to separate the lanes? Yes. Yes. So you'll see that when they explain the design. So after they go through the explanation, the point of this meeting is to present the project to us and you know surrounding neighborhoods and hear comments and concerns. So this is part of the public process. This is why they're having the meeting to hear from us. Uh, and after they go through their presentation, they will they will go to you three and I first. Um, I don't know if you guys want to speak first, if, if you want me or Mark to lead it off, um, whichever, whatever you prefer, but we'll get the, uh, we'll get the ability to talk and then they'll open it up to the, the public. Sounds good. So, you know, we want to encourage anybody that's interested. And, uh, if you live in the hunt, you probably should be interested to get on this call and, uh, hear, hear for yourself firsthand and, 
um, hopefully have an opportunity to um, ask any questions or make any comments. Okay, so, let's go. Get yeah, on the call. Let's go. So, um, let's see, uh, did you have anything you wanted to mention in your town administrator update, Tony? Um, I'll just, no, not really. I mean, we we're, we uh, had a we had a HR training uh, yesterday in the town hall while department heads were there and were uh, provided training on FMLA and ADA and you know it was really valuable for our for our staff so that was that was great um, and uh, I was on a, a radio show that's being aired this weekend with the Swanscott town administrator and the Marblehead town administrator uh, we recorded it earlier today talking about you know how the region's working together and how we work together to get through COVID and the value of having that partnership. And that was really, that was a, a cool moment to be, be a part of that. So that'll get aired on Saturday on 104.9, I think at 11 a.m. Um, so. Tell me, will Swanskit and other regional towns be involved in this bike plan? I in my conversations with DOT in Stantec, I suggest, I don't think they had reached out to Swampscott yet. And I suggested okay. that they do because I said, you know, the, the majority of the folks approaching the Rotary are not uh, Lynn residents. They're, it's probably mostly Nahant and Swampscott and Marblehead. Right. Uh, so that they, even though they're further away from this project, they'll be impacted probably more than the residents of, of Lynn. Tony, uh, can you tell, can you point people in the right direction for joining this, this um, Northern Strand DC artist? Yeah, uh, uh, if you have Facebook, I posted the link uh, to the mass.gov website. Uh, so if you go to the Nahant Town Hall Facebook page, uh, the link is there. Um, or I don't see it on the screen. I'm looking at it, it's already started, so yeah. All right, um, any other quick ideas, Tony, before we hop off? Uh, I can put it, I can put the link in the chat. That sounds good. The link, so the link I'm providing is, um, to the mass.gov website. You have to go there first okay. and then follow the directions there to get to uh, the Zoom. All right, so there's the link in the chat. All right, and then um, uh, Citizens Forum's next. Uh, do we have anybody that wants to speak at Citizens Forum? You can unmute yourself or put something in the chat. Um, anything popping up on the chat or anyone on the line want to unmute themselves and ask anything or provide any comments? If not, we'll, um, we'll go ahead and adjourn and get on this um, PCR call. I move to adjourn. Seconded. Uh, all those in favor? Gene can't the eye. Not coming an eye. Josh Antrimai. Okay. See you guys on the next call. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.